morning. Hope you're doing well. For today's devotion, we look at a familiar story from the Bible, which is the healing of the demon-possessed man. When Jesus fed the 5,000 people and uh, he sent them off, he told the disciples to go over to the other side uh, on a boat and that he would see them on the other side. And he withdrew uh, on the mountains uh, to just spend some time in prayer. And then in the night, he goes uh, walking in the water to meet the disciples and also to cross over to the other side. So we hear that as the disciples were uh, in the midst of the sea and the this, this storms were very uh, strong. And Jesus, uh, he starts to walk on the water and when he comes close to them, uh, they get scared. They think they're seeing a ghost. And Simon Peter says again, if it's you, uh, you know, ask me to come into the water and let me also walk on the water. So we, we know the story quite well and how Jesus uh, helps him to walk in the water. And when he drowns, he picks him up and then they, they enter the boat. And in the Gospel of John, it says that the moment he enter, entered the boat, they immediately reach over to the other shore. So it's like a little time travel. Uh, maybe we'll have a different uh, session on time travel in the Bible in a different message altogether. But for today, we'll talk about the demon-possessed man. So why am I talking about Jesus walking on the water when we are trying to look at the demon-possessed man? So uh, when we read about the demon-possessed man, we get, later get on to know that he had a, a legion of demons inside him. So legion, when you Google it, you find out it's like 6,000 people. So when, whenever we see a demon-possessed man, uh, the very nature, it kind of scares us. Uh, so imagine 6,000 demons in one person. How scary it would be to see such a sight. And then we read that uh, this man used to live among the tombs and used to keep shouting day and night and cutting himself with stones. So it must be a very violent image to just see this person itself. If you were to consider saying that why would a person uh, be living with 6,000 demons inside him? And we also learned that this place was maybe like a Gentile area. And as we know that there were people who were uh, tending to 2,000 pigs uh, in, in that side. So since Jews were not, uh, not people who would grow pigs, so definitely this was a Gentile region. These Gentile region were okay with a man to have so much of demons uh, inside him. And he was, as we read in, in this passage, uh, he was like naked and just uh, running around and cutting himself. It could be possible that uh, they put a lot of black magic or something on him to get all these demons inside him. And he was like the scapegoat of the entire city and banished into the, uh, the regions where nobody would want to even go there. When we see a demon-possessed man, we, know, we see that they're not in control of themselves. If a person has one or two demons inside him, it's difficult to control that person. And here as we read in the Bible that it says that they tried to put chains on him but he used to break those chains very easily and uh, nothing could bind him. But when this demon possessed man having a legion of demons within him, the moment Jesus comes to that side, when Jesus steps out of the boat as we read in, the, in, in Mark gospel, he immediately goes and meets Jesus. And he says, why are you here uh, to come and to give judgment on us before our due time? Why I'm linking both this uh, passage of Jesus walking on the water and the demon possessed man is that why did Jesus have to walk on the water? We see, we know that it is dark uh, when, when Jesus uh, was a fresh prayer and then he wanted to come to the other side. So definitely there was nobody watch, wanting to see where Jesus was. So when we read out in some of the passages also, we find that the people were trying to search for him. And they said that we, we saw that you did not enter the boat. But how did he come over here to the other side? So Jesus did not want to walk on the water to impress 
the people who saw the uh, miracle of feeding 5,000 people. And also one more passage of the Bible, it says that uh, Jesus was kind of going to cross uh, the disciples when they were on the boat. So his purpose was not actually to uh, impress even the, the disciples or to show them that he has complete power over uh, nature and he could walk on water as well. What I read from this is that the very purpose of Jesus walking on water was to signal to the legion of demons on the other side that he is coming to rescue the man who is also a lost sheep of his. So the moment it was in the dark, but the demons obviously would have known that something is happening. They would probably would have sensed that Jesus is coming ahead of time to, to meet them. And the moment Jesus steps onto the shore, they are there with the man trying to come and meet Jesus. By Jesus walking on the water, it was a signal to all these evil forces and dark forces that their time is up. And he is coming in full power to rescue his people. And as we know that uh, when Jesus uh, orders them to leave the man, they request him, can we at least go into the pigs? And uh, he says, okay, fine, go. And 6,000 demons enter 2,000 pigs and all the pigs rush out of, out of a cliff and then they drown. So if 2,000 pigs could not control the demons, how did this man have all these demons for such a long time? And we hear from the Bible that uh, he had these demons for a very long time. So deep down within him, there was a desire that he needs to be saved. A single man's soul was so strong enough to seek out God, even though there was so much of demons within him. And God seeing that came to meet him, though it was in a very completely Gentile area. And he delivered him. So this is what I, I take it from the, the passage of Jesus walking on water. It was not to prove to the disciples that he has control over the of nature, which he, he did have control over. But it was a signal that uh, all the, the demonic forces and the evil forces that were trying to oppress this man, their time is up and he is coming in full power to, to destroy them and destroy the hold that they have on people. It's a common uh, phrase that we all use that I'm fighting demons uh, in my life and I have these demons and I have that demons. Sometimes our demons are uh, our helplessness, our jobless state, financial problems, uh, pressures at home, pressures at office, a lot of things that is troubling us and it weighs so, so much in our lives. So we say that we are fighting these demons in our lives. But when we are having these struggles in our life, if we have the faith of that man who had so much of real demons within him, seeking God in spite of all the demons that he had with him, and God comes to his rescue, how much more will our God answer our prayers? So when we seek God, he will come to us walking on the waters and being our savior as we look up to him for our salvation. So stay strong. So this message is basically for all those who are fighting a lot of problems in their life and who think that there is no solution at all to uh, their problems. You may feel that there's no one to listen to you, that you are an outcast, that is, everybody has given up on you, your family has given up on you, your society has given up on you. There is no hope at all. Imagine the plight of this man who had all the demons. There was completely no hope. He was a Gentile. There was no need for Jesus to come out there. He was the worst of the entire society. But still Jesus had time to come and meet him and to rescue him and be there when he needed to be saved. If Jesus can rescue that man, I'm sure that no matter what your troubles are, no matter how many demons you're fighting in your life, Jesus will come there and he will rescue you. So stay strong, uh, keep the faith, and our God is walking on the waters to come and rescue you. Take care. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.